you're watching a free sample video from Teachers Test Prep. For videos like this one covering every area of your exam, visit us today at www.teacherstestprep.com. Order and inequality. Um, sometimes you're gonna get questions that relate to putting things in order or looking at the relationships between uh, numbers. For example, they might ask you which of these statements is true, uh, like what we see here, and they might have different statements um, where things are set uh, as unequal to each other, inequalities, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Um, so let's talk about what these terms mean. Um, these, the symbol that you see here um, at the top uh, means greater than. Um, and you can sort of think about it as the alligator eats the bigger meal. So whatever this is facing towards, what's on this side that the mouth is going toward is the greater thing than what's on the other side. Um, the second symbol you've seen means less than. The third symbol means greater than or equal to. You see that it's got that symbol, but it has the equal to underneath it. And the last symbol there means less than or equal to. Um, so let's look at these statements and evaluate which ones are true. Um, negative 8 is less than 4. True or false? Yes, that's true. Um, any negative number is less than any positive number um, right off the bat. So it doesn't matter that 8 is a bigger number than 4. It's negative 8, so it is less than 4. Um, negative 8 is less than or equal to 4. Is that true? Yes, absolutely. The key thing is less than or equal to. So if it's equal to, that makes it true. Or if it's less than, that also makes it true. It doesn't have to be equal and less. Obviously, there wouldn't even be a way for that to be possible. Um, so don't let that equal to part throw you off. Um, it's less than or equal to, and it's less than. So that satisfies the criteria. That makes sense. Um, 4 is less than or equal to 4. Um, it's not less than 4, but it is equal to 4. 4 equals 4. So again, less than or equal to. The or equal to part makes that true. Um, 4 is greater than or equal to 8. No, that's not true, right? 8 is greater than 4. So that fourth statement, not true. What about the fifth statement here? 2 and a half is greater than 2 and a quarter is greater than 1 and a half. Um, that is true. Um, a half is greater than a quarter, um, so two and a half is greater than two and a quarter, um, and two and a quarter, of course, is greater than one and a half. Um, the last one here says two and a quarter is less than one and a half is less than two and three fourths. Well, one and a half is less than two and three quarters, um, but two and a quarter is not less than one, one and a half. So if any part of that statement is untrue, the whole statement is considered untrue. So that last statement is not correct. Sometimes you may need to put a set of numbers, often fractions, in order. For example, on the previous slide, uh, the last couple of scenarios showed a set of fractions in order. Um, you might need to determine, they might give you kind of tricky fractions and you need to know which one is greater, uh, which one's in the middle, which one is the smallest, that sort of thing. So there's kind of two uh, techniques that you can use to order fractions. The first is to convert all the fractions into fractions with a common denominator. And the easiest way to find a common denominator is to just multiply all the denominators. That doesn't necessarily give you the smallest common denominator, but 100% of the time it will give you a common denominator. Then you just need to convert the numerators by multiplying them by whatever thing you multiply the denominator by. So we've talked about this in other sections. You can review that idea of how to find a common denominator in those specific sections that deal with fractions. Um, so that's one way to do it. Convert them to a common denominator, then look at the numerators and just make sure that the numerators are placed in proper order. Another way to do it is to convert all the fractions into decimals by dividing the numerator by the denominator. Um, so just remember that a fraction basically is just a division problem. It's saying numerator divided by denominator. So you can divide each of them, write the decimals underneath them, and then compare the decimal uh, figures and see which one is smallest, middle, and largest. So these are two techniques that you can use, whichever is easiest based on the particular numbers that you are given on that particular problem. Um, 
solving inequalities. Inequalities can be solved using the same basic techniques used to solve equations. There's just one kind of extra step that you need to remember. Um, so all the same stuff that you would do in terms of distributing and combining like terms and solving using balancing, taking the algorithmic opposite of whatever's being done to the variable, all the things you would do to isolate that variable and solve that equation, you can do with an inequality. The thing you have to remember is that whenever you multiply or divide by a negative, you need to reverse the sign. So if it's pointing this way, you turn it that way. Whenever you multiply or divide by a negative, not if you add or subtract, um, only if you multiply or divide, and only if you're multiplying or dividing by a negative number. Um, so let's look at an example here. Solve for x in the statement below. Five is greater than negative three x minus one. We can start by adding one to both sides. So get rid of that one on the side where the x is. Um, we add one to both sides, the minus one goes away, um, and five plus one becomes six. So now you have six is greater than negative three x. Um, we want to get x by itself, so what's being done to x right now is it's being multiplied by negative three. So we take the algorithmic opposite and we divide by negative three. Um, so negative 3x divided by negative 3 is simply x, but 6 divided by negative 3 gives us negative 2. But what we need to remember here is that we divided by a negative, so that means we have to reverse the sign. So now we get uh, negative 2 is less than x. Um, so just remember that added step. Whenever you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to reverse the sign. Other than that, you're solving this the same exact way you would with any other single variable algebraic equation. We hope you found this free teacher's test prep sample video helpful. For more videos like this one covering all the subject matter and strategy you need to pass your exam, visit us today at www.teacherstestprep.com.